CIUT FM. This is CIUT 89.5 FM. My name is Valentino Asenza. You're listening to Hal and happy Tuesday, November 24th, 2020, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, hope you can stay throughout the hour of the show. Uh, in the first half, I'm going to be talking to um, a, a singer, songwriter, and composer George Chang. Um, and uh, I'm also going to be talking to Harriet Chung. The two of them uh, were involved in a musical called The Golden Lotus, and uh, we're going to play some music from that as well. Uh, they're going to talk about an upcoming album that they have. That will be the first half of the show. The second half of the show, I'm very honored to be interviewing uh, Matthew Hollett, the winner of the 2020 CBC Poetry Prize. So I'm hoping that you can stick around for um, the whole hour and uh, we're going to start things off as we do always with a song and this particular song we're going to be talking about with Harriet and George. This is A World Away from the musical The Golden Lotus on CIUT 89.5 FM.
This is CIUT 89.5 FM. My name is Valentino Asenza, and we just listened to the song A World Away from the Golden Lotus. And the two guests uh, of the interview that I'm going to be playing here, uh, Harriet uh, Chung and uh, George Chang, um, are in, involved in these creative projects together. For those of you that don't know, Harriet Chung was born in Hong Kong and studied dance at the Hong Kong Academy of Performing Arts. Uh, she moved to uh, Canada to further her dance training at the National Ballet of Canada. She has danced professionally with the Empire State Ballet, Ontario Ballet Theatre, Jing Dance. She broke into musical theatre and featured uh, she's featured in a number of musicals uh, such as The Phantom of the Opera, The King and I. Um, and as for George, George Chang was born in Ottawa, Canada and is of Taiwanese descent. Uh, George received his theater training at the University of Guelph. Uh, during which time he was also known to hitchhike to Toronto comedy clubs to perform his stand-up act. Uh, he's also been, uh, he's acted in plays including uh, the Stratford Festival, um, and uh, he is uh, also writing some songs. The two of them have an album coming up together. It was kind of cool to talk to the two of them, uh, the Golden Lotus and everything that they're up to, and I'm going to play the inner for you right now on CIUT 89.5. This is CIUT 89.5 FM. My name is Valentino Asenza. You're listening to Hal, and thank you one and all for tuning in. It's always great on Hal. We get writers of every kind, and it's always great when there's always a connection to theater. And what makes this unique is it's musical theater in this case. I am uh, actually quite pleased to have uh, in the virtual studio uh, George Ch uh, Chung and uh, sorry George Chang and Harriet Chung, uh, who uh, George is actually uh, he's a playwright and an actor, and Harriet is also a writer and a musical theater performer, and they've teamed up to create some really wonderful beauty and uh, uh, the reason why I'm having them on here is because we had just heard a song uh, from uh, the musical called uh, The Golden Lotus uh, called A World Away and uh, thank you both first and foremost for being here thank you so much appreciate yeah, it thanks for having us thank you thank you you guys hanging in okay with all this pandemic stuff you guys doing all right yeah um, uh, you know when you're cooped up like this uh, no better time to write and create stuff yeah, for sure. Okay, so this is what I'd like to know. Uh, uh, what, uh, a world away, let, let us know what is what is the premise of the Golden Lotus and how does a world away fit into it? Well, Golden Lotus is a musical based upon uh, probably the most infamous Chinese novel um, in history called Jinping Mei. And um, a world away is the uh, signature pop ballad from the musical it's when the lead is pining for the uh the man she loves so oh. we've taken this uh song which from the musical and we we rebooted it we've made it into like a pop single and uh, we dropped it as a single uh, in august so in yeah it's out there interesting now. interesting and, and, and a music video a modern day music video which is out there as well yeah, I, 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 and I was fortunate enough to look at that, and you had the, the were shots with the whole orchestra in there, and, and that was fantastic. Harriet, tell me about uh, your connection to the song in terms of rehearsing the song and singing it. What kind of emotions did you experience given the, the lineage that the song has with this musical and what it, what it means to you in terms of your uh, musical theater career? Yeah, A World Away is a very, a very universal song. It's like people can connect to it. Like one of my colleagues from Phantom of the Opera, I worked with her um, in the Toronto cast. She actually um, emailed me and told me that how amazing is the song because she has a son that's graduate, like is going to university and, and it's like a world away. And he ha she is thinking about him even like, you know, one day he left like just one day and she's thinking about him already and also people uh connect with this song with the pandemic as well because right. we are really a world away and you're missing your loved ones all over the world so it's actually resonate with a lot of people that's why this this song is very successful and um my my friends and colleagues and they they're really supportive and they really give a lot of good feedbacks about this song 
and I mean, you know, one of the things about about musical theater is, uh, for, you know, sometimes I love musical theater. I do. I have I have favorite musicals. I mean, you know, the standards, of course, for me would be like The Wizard of Oz and West Side Story. But sometimes when I hear like the negative criticism of of musical theater, I'm like, come on, what a ridiculous genre. Who goes out into the street and breaks into song? And I'm like, okay, well, people don't necessarily go out into the street and break into song. I do sometimes, but what people will do is they'll go into the studio and break into song. And, and George, I'm just, I'm just wondering, what, what is distinctly different between, say, writing just like a normal play? Because I know you're all, you also had success in, in Stratford for just like a regular play and a musical. What, what would you say, I mean, other than the music, in terms of writing disciplines, what would you say is distinctly different from a writing perspective? Well, with Stratford, I was an actor there. I didn't actually write a play for Stratford. But yeah, I have written a, a couple plays in the past. Um, I, I find that when you when you break into song, like Golden Lotus, for example, it's, it's a sung through musical. And it's a very melodramatic story. And I think melodrama, in my opinion, from my personal bias, is best sung, you know? <laughs> right, right, yeah, you yeah. break into song. And so I, you know, what better way to bring out all those emotions by then by singing it yeah and yeah i mean and for sure and like so the other the other cool thing that i, I kind of read about uh, harriet is that harriet you got into writing songs from being in musicals so so what was it about being in those musicals that inspired you to start writing songs oh actually i i cannot say i'm a writer i have my one song <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I wrote one song. It's going to be in my album. So this is like my probably my one and only. I was just get inspired and just like spontaneous. I'm like, okay, this is a song. And and for me, like writing songs is like very fast. If you get the idea, you get it down, and that's it. Your best song. If you cannot have any idea, you drill on something. It's like I I'm a dancer as well. I choreograph a lot. That's what I I choreograph and I put musical together, I put dance together. So my best piece are always quick and the ideas just rush in. If you have to drill into something, those are no good anymore. Right. Yeah. So, so and, and the two of you are are writing a, a new album. Is that yeah. right? Can, can you it's tell us? George. On it's album. George. It's George's it's album. 10 songs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I have one, one song in it. <laughs> one of the songs, uh, she wrote the music, I wrote the lyrics, but the other nine songs yeah. were written, music and lyrics by me. And yeah, we're in the midst of uh, working on that. We've been working it uh, since the summer, on it since the summer, and we are hope to release it early next year. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. And I mean, has I'm just curious, but has the has the has the pandemic um, uh, contributed to uh, the creative flow? I mean, I know I, I talk with a lot of a lot of writers, and a lot of writers are grateful, I guess, to kind of have the idling time. And I'm just wondering, like, it, would that be contributing to uh, your creative process also? I think so. I mean, for sure, it's. Uh being uh, especially during the lockdown you know there's no real there was no real you try to limit the things you need to do outside so it's perfect you just you just stay cooped up and uh and, and create it was a wonderful time i you know when you're in the zone you know there's no better any writer or composer will tell you when you're in the zone there's no more there's no it's it's a magical time when you, and i i remember i had a few weeks um about four weeks between like August and September uh, where I was just in the zone and I pretty much put together the last of the uh, 10 songs uh, of the album. Yeah. So I put it all together in those weeks. Um, a lot, half the songs I would say bits and pieces were, I, I would say three songs were written well before, mm. uh, like for example, world away was written for the musical, uh, but it was rebooted uh, for the album. But, um, and then other two songs I had written before, so we thought we'd throw them in this album. And then the other seven songs I really wrote within within this summer and into into this fall. And, and when I was in the zone, it was just a magical time when you when you can when you have that time to just just create, yeah. And uh, and and Harriet, in terms of your relationship with musicals, like in terms of singing, as I understand it, it started uh, in, like back in Hong Kong. You were singing in a choir, is that right? 
Yeah, yeah. I was singing in the Hong Kong Chinese Choir and I tour a lot and Yip's Chinese Choir. I tour a lot and I, I know there's better place out, out there. And I never knew, but, but the choir technique is very different than musical theater. And I never knew I can put the dance and I, I do ballet all my life. And I actually come to Canada for the National Ballet School. So I never connect two things, the singing and dancing together until I come to Canada. I open, I really open my eyes. So I connect them together and they become like my musical theater path. Mm -hmm. so like it just opened up my eyes so much because in Hong Kong, there's no musical really. Like I, I oh. only know about um, sound of, the sound of music and I, I, I watch it over and over again, like during typhoon season that drive my whole family nuts. <laughs> so in the back of my mind, like I'm a, you know, fanatics. and I came here and I got into Phantom and I was in Cats and I was in King and I, and I was in a few production of the King and I, King and I as well. And I laid on choreographed for that as well. So it just opened my, up my path so much when I come to Canada and I get into Phantom. That's what my first stepping stone. I'm curious to, to know, uh, how did the two of you feel? I mean, for me, my relationship to musical theater was my grandfather, my Italian grandfather would always play opera music all the time. And as a kid, as a kid, I was like, what is this? Why is he always playing this? But then I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a poet and a spoken word artist myself. So as I grew up, uh, whenever I would go to an opera, I'd get the librettos and I'd see that there was, you know, there, there, the, the lyrics are very poetic. Um, and and that's how that's what got me into musical theater. And I've seen quite an evolution uh, of of musical theater. Uh, and I mean, most recently, it's evolved into you know I guess one of the one of the one of the more popular ones in terms of contemporary musicals is Hamilton, where they're kind of yeah. using new music forms um, like yeah, they're using hip hop, right? The hip hop and rap. Yes, yes. I'm curious yeah. to know either of your opinions on how you feel about that, about the evolution of musicals. Do you think it should keep evolving like that? Or are you traditionalists that it should only be like, you know, one kind of song for a musical? No, I, I'm all for it because I think when opera, when it was in its Haiti, that was the pop music of the time. So right. now yeah, our pop music is pop music, yeah. rap, hip hop. It's all that stuff. So, Definitely, you know, when you stage things, we should speak the language of, of the, the music of today, you know. So Golden Lotus, for example, is is pop. It's a pop musical. Right. So, uh, yeah, so Hamilton is a lot of rap rap and stuff like that in it. So it's, it's amazing. That's why it's resonated throughout the world. And Harry, yeah. do, do you feel the same way in terms of, of that evolution in, in music for musicals there? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I grew up with classical music, too. And when you think about Carmen, it's like the pop music of the time, right? right. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it, it has to it has to resonate with the society. And now, like Hamilton is amazing because it talk about so much history. I think they should get an award for getting the most lyrics and the story. <laughs> yeah. The musical. yeah. Like this yeah. is so much to absorb, and they are so popular for a reason. The music is amazing. The lyrics and the, and the creativity, the choreography is incredible. It's like really high level, really appreciate that. And you know, I, I, I know that you, you say that you, you, Harriet, you yourself are not a writer, but there must be some kind of a similar writing process when you're putting together a scene in terms of choreography, because you definitely, Right, you have to match, I guess, the movements to the mood and what's going on in the plot. Talk about that process. Like, what wh what do you go through when you're choreographing a scene? Yeah, like um, I I actually own a musical theater school and dance. Like I do dance, I teach dance and musical theater. So I put production together for the kids. So I have I have dance and music music together. Um, I will I will write my storyline. Mm. And I will put in cover songs sometimes. Sometimes I will put in other people's original song. They will chip in and I will write a story for the kids. Yeah. And, and those, those songs inspire me when I, the inspiration come and it's just go, it's endless. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just, you know, like I, I, for me, it's like, uh, I mean, I, I can't imagine 
even uh, like I've always wanted to like I took I went to theater school to write a play like to, to be to be a playwright but I never I never stuck with it it was always a, a dream of mine to write a play and then see the characters come alive uh, on stage and I'm just I'm just trying to I'm just trying to you know uh, wonder George from a from a writing standpoint is that always part of the high seeing these characters that you create come, come alive on stage Oh, definitely. I mean, when you write, you can envision the characters one way, but there's nothing more beautiful than watching an actor take on the world and bring bring it life. And they often discover things that you, you never even thought of, you know, and, and they just make it more alive and make it even better than you even, you know, you, you even planned. It was amazing. You know, uh, when we premiered, um, for example, Golden Lotus in Hong Kong a few years ago. Yeah, I just remember just being like, just during the rehearsal process, just going, wow, yeah. I never thought of the character that way. Wow, he's really added this twist to it. I love that element, you know what I mean? So it's amazing what you can come come up with. And I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, for sure. And you know, I'm just curious too, like what what would, what would what, how, how is an audience, are, are there, are there are the way that like say uh, your work is received say from a Hong Kong audience versus a you know a North American or a Toronto audience is there a, di a difference in how how the the audience receives it uh, like in terms of how an audience views a theater production? Well, for Golden Lotus, for example, it's very it's a very well known story in Asia and in Hong Kong, China. And that, whereas here, nobody knows about it. So when we premiered it at the ASCAP Disney Musical Theater Workshop in New York City uh, a few years back, um, yeah, it was like, you know, uh, people like Steven Schwartz were there, David Henry Huang, Craig Cornelia, like musical theater bigwigs. And, you know, they had never heard of this story, but they were just fascinated with the story and just th the music. They just thought it was terrific. And the combination of this exotic, music i mean this exotic story that they never heard of but mm. it's a timeless tale um because the themes in it uh are timeless you know um so when we did it in new york yeah it was like what's the story but it's an amazing story who are these characters and they're so drawn by the characters and it was done all to pop music so they thought that was really cool Interesting. So, I mean, Harriet, in terms of your influences, you said that you watched the the Sound of Music and and that and you were in the choir. Were there any other particular influences that uh, that really inspired you to continue on this path, on 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 this musical path? Yeah. Well, because my background is well, I have my piano background and my uh, my choir background and and my ballet background, and I when I come to Canada, I put them all together. And this is this is musical theater. And I ex explored to, I went to New York for audition for Cats and I got the job for the German cast of Cats. And there's no turning back. When I just, if I do just um, a, a dance show right now, I feel like there's one element is missing that I'm mm. mute. I can't, you know, I can't yeah. use it. So when I did Cats, it's the singing, like what can be more fun than singing and dancing together like this every night, right? So this is like so many things that have inspired me. And um, when I go to New York, of course, like a couple, every couple of years, I go to watch like binge watch. Well, we would sometimes I do two shows a day and, you know, in five days I would be like doing, uh, watching like eight shows. Wow. <laughs> so very, very yeah, inspire me a lot. Like I love all kinds of musical and contemporary, classic, and every kind. Excellent. And okay, so I mean, I, I'd want to ask you both this: what from 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 uh, from either from a, a singer's perspective or a writer's perspective, what are you hoping listeners or audiences get out of a song like "A World Away"? Well, um, we released we're releasing "A World Away." for this album. We dropped it as a single right now, just, um, and then when we released the album, um, just, just the, um, we thought of it a way as a bit of a way to promote the musical, but it's also an album on its own. Um, when we first decided to, to drop the, the, um, the single, we thought, oh, maybe we do a revamped version where it, where it's even more poppy mm. and, uh, 
more people will be aware of the song and the musical. But then when, when we released it, we got such a good response and we decided to uh, make an album. And so with this album, I think um, uh, there's another, there's one more song from the musical in the album. And then there's, and then the other eight songs are original songs uh, that uh, we're collaborating to, uh, to put out as an album, which we're going to call the world away. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. And, and Harriet, what are you hoping that audiences or listeners get out of the song from, from a singer's perspective? Well, especially the, the pandemic, right? So I, I hope I hope the people is going to like, um, right now they coop up in their own little thing. I think right. this will take them to make a lot of journeys. We, we have some songs that is like, talk about uh, Koala Lake, right? That's the song. That's one song is called Koala Lake. Right, Kawartha Lakes. Yes, and oh. and we take them to like old Montreal. So there's a lot of like traveling song and something. Uh, today and tomorrow is about uh, mother, uh, memories of a mother. So I want the memory, like I want the imaginary uh, imagination go wild. I just want them to enjoy all the journey of this album. Yeah, that's like, true. The album, the songs, the different songs take you on different journey. Every song takes you uh, to another place. So uh, that was a theme we wanted to bring across. So that's why we called it A World Away. Well, not only is the signature single called The World Away, but it takes you to many worlds. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Um, so if people wanted to keep up with the two of you and, and your upcoming projects and what you're doing, how can they do that? Do you guys have a social media presence, a website? How can people keep up with you? Well, the, the, the current single that's out there is, is, is on the streaming platforms as a World Away remix. Mm -hmm. um, we have an album that we recorded back in 2015 for the musical. It's called Golden Lotus Sounds from the Musical. And the original version of A World Away is actually in that. And it's the musical theater version. Uh, so that's on the streaming platforms as well. Um, and Harriet has her own website at harrietchung.com and I have my own website at George Chang, C H I A N G dot org. Yeah. Okay. And we are actually going to go out with the song today and tomorrow. Harriet, you were singing, you were saying that it was about, uh, it was about your, was I wrong in saying it was about your mother? It was about, uh, or it was, well, actually, sorry. I wrote the song and it's actually about my mother. Oh, your mother. Oh, my yeah. apologies. Okay. Okay. So it's about your mother. Yeah. yeah and, it's, I wrote, yeah. For okay. sure. And, uh, this is the uh, world premiere. Uh, we just did a quick rough mix uh, just for this interview. Uh, we just got the backup vocals the other day and we just did a quick rough mix. Uh, it sounds pretty good, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna be the, the mix that we have on the album, but it's, pr it's pretty good. So uh, let's, let's hear it. All we're right, excellent. Uh, we're, we're, we're very honored. I, I'm very honored to talk to the both of you. Very honored that you uh, brought this song for us. And I, I wish you nothing but continued success. Thank you, George. And thank you, Harriet. Thank you thank so much. Thank you very much, Valentino. You're very welcome. This is Today and Tomorrow on CAUT 89.5 FM. saw the smile in your eyes I was young only a child you put a toy in my hands and you laughed when I went wild I saw the glow on your face as you watched me jump with glee a million times shared between just you and me in the shining sunlight in the darkness of night i wish you were here today and tomorrow in the darkness of night in the shining sunlight you're always with me today and tomorrow You tried to hide when I would steal a glance. You taught me 
Today I 